Hi everyone and welcome back. This is my second week of third year kicking it off with a bang. So today we had our module launch for our next assignment which is policy and politics. 3,000 words. I think I mentioned this last week. I wasn't looking forward to this one. However, looking at the assignment brief and having the lecture today, I thought, you know what, actually this is going to be okay to write, I think. I hope I'm not jinxing myself here, but in my head I'm thinking, actually, yeah, okay, this sounds easy, I think I can do this, which I don't know whether it will be easy or not, I don't know, but I've started to make some notes, I've started planning the assignment, and to be honest, I don't usually plan assignments, I literally start writing, that's the way I've always done my assignments, it's just the way I work, I've never made a plan or anything like that. Um, but this time, because there's a lot of things that I want to include in this one, because I already know what I want to, what topic I want to discuss within this assignment, I just want to make sure I cover everything that I need to. So I'm just making some bullet points rather than a, an actual plan. I'm making some bullet points of things that I want to include in my assignment. Make sure they get in there. Make sure I hit the marks, hit the marking criteria, hit the assignment brief, and pass. So basically, this assignment is all about. Firstly, we have to write a bit of a, a reflection to start with about something that we've experienced out in practice and then we're going to look at the policies, procedures, guidelines, the laws, the rules, the regulations, what the government says about that, what's been happening out there in practice, what could be happening in the future in practice. So I think it's going to be okay. I've got a situation in mind that happened when I was out on my last placement on my very last day. I had a really tough day. Something happened and I'm going to write about that as my reflection and there's going to be a lot of statistics and policies and procedures and guidelines and laws and things like that to back it up and there's also a few things that I can critically analyse as well. So fingers crossed think I've got it but we'll see as the week goes on. Tomorrow I'm back in uni for a 9 till 5 all day -er, and it's going to be the physiology so at the minute we're learning about the liver. This was last week so last week and this week we are learning about the liver and to be honest I we haven't done anything. We've briefly spoke about the liver but we haven't gone in depth with the liver before so this is brand new information to me. I think it's just going to be that little bit harder to get my head around because it's something brand spanking new thrown at us. Right now I'm actually on the Khan Academy. Um, let me just show you. So yeah, so this is the video I'm currently watching on the Khan Academy. I really highly recommend the Khan Academy for revising physiology. It's something that I find amazing and it's just really, really helped me with my physiology and my exams. So that's it for day one. I shall see you all tomorrow. I have just left for uni. It's freezing cold and it snowed. Yes. The only thing is I live at the top of a hill so I have to try and get down that hill without sliding and breaking my leg. <laughs> Fingers crossed I make it into uni today. And yeah, hopefully I've got a great day ahead and I shall see you later. So that's me, I'm back, I'm home. It's about nine o'clock at night now because I've had a non-stop evening since I got back. I actually ended up making some really nice vegetable lasagna. Then I had a Skype call with my fellow GPN student ambassadors, which was amazing. Just having a little bit of an update between everybody and what's been going on. Oh, and then I had to do my basic life support, mandatory online training thing before our skill session tomorrow, which I'm really excited for. So today, so today, as I said, we had a full day of physiology. It's all about liver cirrhosis, this case study. And I'm not gonna lie, you might be able to tell by the look on my face. Um, <laughs> I'm really struggling. Last night I showed you I was on Khan Academy. I was on Khan Academy, I was looking at the liver cirrhosis video and it was amazing. I've made a little play playlist actually, so have a look at the playlist. It's in there, it's such a good video. I fully understood it. I was like, yes, I get this, this is amazing. And then today I've gone in and it's all, whew. I can understand that video and cirrhosis and how it affects the body and all of that. But the things that we did today was just so in depth that it's just gone way over my head. So I fully plan on finding 
more Khan Academy videos and just going over and over and over until it's drilled into my brain and I understand it. Because right now I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna pass this exam? Because some of the things that was taught today were so in depth and I was just thinking, wow, do we need to know this in depth? I mean, I fully understand as nurses, you know, we need the physiology, we need the theory, and I am one person that absolutely loves it when you're out in practice, a patient's sick, and you can start to think and apply that physiology to that patient, and it's just, it is like, like magic fireworks in your mind going, whoa, I understand this. It's the best moment you'll ever have. But today I felt like it was a little bit too in-depth, like I felt like I should be training to be a doctor, it was that much in-depth and I was thinking, how am I going to remember this, how am I going to learn this, how, what am I going to do with my life? But that was only the second and third sessions we had today, it was four hours of physiology and I think as time goes on with the other case studies, because we've still got three case studies to go through, this is only the first case study. So it's going to be the same thing repeated, just different scenarios, different diseases, different conditions, things like that. And I think as time goes along, I'm fingers crossed by the end of it, I'm going to be like, I get it, I know it, I'm ready for this exam. Fingers crossed. Because right now, um, you don't see me panic much, but I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm panicking, I'm thinking, oh my God, am I going to pass this exam? And that's the first time I think I've really doubted myself and my abilities like really, really doubted. I know before I've stressed and things about revision and things like that. This is the first time that I'm actually thinking, wow, this is one that I could actually fail. So I need to make sure I don't fail. I need to make sure I'm revising between now and the exam in May. I need to be revising from now to stay on top of it every single week, get it into my brain every single week and hopefully by the time the exam comes, I'm going to remember it and I'm going to be there. I'm going to be hitting the high marks and hopefully I'm going to do this. So I have got some positivity. I have got faith. I just, I know where my weak areas are. I know that I need to focus on those, revise, put a plan into place to make sure I don't fail this exam. And I think that's something really important you have to do as a student nurse you need to recognise those weaknesses and you need to develop and grow as a student nurse because when you qualify and you're out there it's going to be tough so it's really important even as a qualified nurse that you recognise those weaknesses and you develop and you grow. Not only that, it's, it's when you're a qualified nurse that's what teamwork's all about. Your weakness is somebody else's strength and we bond and we gel and we collaborate together to provide the best care possible for our patient. So yeah, so sorry, I've gone on on a little bit of a tangent there. So tomorrow is our last day of the week. We have our skills sessions, which is gonna be basic life support. So I'm gonna get some videos. I'm gonna show you what we do in basic life support. Hopefully not make a fool of myself doing basic life support and I'll show you how it goes. So I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm gonna stop panicking. I'm shutting down, I'm showering and getting to bed. I'll see you all tomorrow ready for an amazing session. So that's me back. I've had my very last life support session at university today. It's really sad. It's really upsetting that actually everything we're doing now is like for the last time at university because it's the final year. It's really emotional, guys. It's just like, oh, it's sad. I'm gonna try not to get emotional, shake it off. So yeah, so our last very last life support session went really really well it was fantastic and to be honest I really worry about my own chest compressions because I always get the technique wrong if you do life support out there if you know what I'm talking about you'll know what I'm talking about but for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about when you're doing chest compressions during CPR you have to position your body right to get the amount of weight to actually get the depth that you need you need to get five to six centimeters I don't know that's not even five or six centimeters but you need to get five or six centimeters depth on that chest and it's actually harder than you think so for me the mistake I make is when I'm kneeling down on the floor I put my knees together and also my body's not far enough over the body over the chest when I'm doing the chest compressions so I learned today 
if I put my knees as close to the body as possible, I just separate them so their shoulders, shoulder widths apart and put my body all the way over, keep a completely straight arm, don't bend your arms at all and just rock as hard as you can onto the chest, put all of that weight and you will do it because I really struggled and my very first attempt today, I got 66%, which is embarrassing. Nobody wants to do almost half of a chest compression. No, that's not okay. So the, it was the first attempt. I haven't done CPR for a long, long, long time. I haven't practiced it since last year. So I was really out of touch. And that was because, all because, my body posture and everything was completely wrong. And I was going a little bit too quick. So those were the reasons why I got 66%. So the second attempt, I corrected my body positioning. I went for it again, but I was just going that little bit too quick again. So I got 84%, but all my body position was right. My technique was okay. It was just, I was going that little bit too fast. So then I, I did it again and I did, I did it again and again and again until I perfected it. Still got 94%. I got the 94% because as I was doing it, my, my hand just altered. I wasn't concentrating on my hand positioning and my hand kept altering, so going too high up on the chest. So that was just knocking off some points for me. So just to warn you out there, when you're doing your life support, just make sure your body position is right and your chest compressions are deep enough. Make sure you're in the right place and make sure your breaths are good. My breaths I'm fine with, I'm good with breaths, I can get enough ventilation into the body. It's just the chest compression bit, which is the most important bit of doing CPR on an adult is the chest compressions, because usually with adults, it's because of a cardiovascular problem. Don't need as many breaths as you do with a child, because in children, the more likely cause of them being unresponsive is due to a respiratory problem. So those are the difference between adult and child. So with a child, you would give five rescue breaths first, and then you would go on to the chest compressions and you would do 15 to two for a child. But on an adult, you straight to chest compressions, 30 to two, 30 to two, and keep going until you get a response or you get the defib or you get some help. So yeah, so for me, ah, oh, it just, it, it was just, just to start off with and seeing that 66%, I was like, oh, I need to do better because if this is a life, a real life situation out there, I want to give that patient the best chance possible of survival. I don't want to be a 50% student. I don't want to be a 60% student. I don't even want to be an 80% student with chest compressions. I want to be 100%. And I'm still gutted that I've got 94 and I just made those slight mistakes. But as long as I remember those techniques in the moment, if it ever, ever happens, I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen at some point in my life. As long as I remember those techniques and what to do, then I'm going to be just fine. But practice makes perfect is the top tip for CPR. Practice, practice, practice. And to be honest, I think I'm going to go and make use of our skill sessions and keep practicing because I want to perfect this.